Hey, how's it going everybody? My name is Aaron Hilliard. Welcome to Mushroom Wonderland. I am a total mushroom geek, have been my whole life. I'm the vice president of the local mycological society and I like to go out into the woods and discover what kind of wild mushrooms are growing. It's been a while since I did one of these foraging videos. If you're new to the channel, check out the other videos, man, and make you want to subscribe, you know what I'm saying? So come with me into the forest. Let's go see what kind of mushrooms are growing in the early summer here in Mushroom Wonderland. <music> Mushroom Wonderland. Right down here, I see a fruiting of some kind of cool little fungus. These ones are called bird nest fungi, or the woolly bird nest fungi. Wow, look at that one, it's full of little eggs. They're not actually eggs, but they do resemble eggs. Oh, here's a bunch more, look at this. So this is a great example. These just opened up, it just rained, and it got just perfect for them. Look at that. So these are called periodals, and they're little tiny egg-like structures that grow inside these birds' nests. How weird is nature, right? And so what's gonna happen is a raindrop will fall, and it'll land right in that cup, and it's gonna splash these little periodals all over the place. And the spores are produced on these little egg-like structures. Some of them even have like an umbilical cord that attaches the little, the little egg-like structure to the cup. You can see these little tiny periodols. These are a basidiomycete, so they, they grow spores on little basidia. These are the spore bearing surface, so just a little favor to that. So they look kind of big and obvious when I'm looking at them right here, but just to give you a little context, you back it up. This is the stick that all these little guys are on, so cool little mushrooms. They sure are beautiful. Some of my favorite to photograph, so if you stick that right in the light somewhere, look at that. Boom, and now we got some really bizarre little fungal structures. The woolly bird nest fungus, or Nigella niveotomentosa. We're in the beginning of June, so summer is uh, approaching quickly, and uh, then it just rained quite a bit, and uh, and we got like three quarters of an inch of rain or something in the last couple of days. So all this warmth and then the moisture, the mushrooms are gonna love that. Look how pretty this is, just shining in the sunshine. The poor man's gumdrop or Gwipiniopsis alpina. This one is really bright orange, especially when it's in the sunshine like that. Really pretty. This is one of the orange jelly fungi that grow on sticks and twigs. This one really doesn't grow on twigs any bigger than this these are edible you can just pick it right off the log just like that and eat it all these orange jelly fungus that grow off of the wood around here are generally safe to eat uh, not even generally they're they're safe to eat and some people like them try it and then impress your friends and say oh look what we can eat all of these little edible gummy drops of the forest Check this out growing right here on this stump. It's got an actual cap and stem like a normal mushroom. It's not one of these tree dwelling mushrooms. Kind of exciting when I find actual regular, you know, mushroom looking mushrooms out here. These ones are growing off of this rotten stump here. And so that's one key indicator of what species of mushroom this might be. Um, certain mushrooms just grow off of dead wood. 
It's a saprobic mushroom. There are a couple exceptions. There are some mycorrhizal mushrooms that will also grow off dead wood, which is bizarre, like the um, admirable Belit can do that, you know, it likes to grow off of a, lo a rotting log, but it's also, um, it's also in a, in a symbiotic relationship with the trees nearby. But these ones right here, known as the deer shield mushroom, this one, Pluteus cervinus, or Pluteus cervinus. So this guy is gonna have a pink spore print. Those gills are beautiful, and uh, they do have a pinkish tinge to them, so interesting. Now, if it were really bright pink gills, that would probably be a agaricus, but these ones just have pink spores on white gills, so, um, and growing on dead wood, and also these gills do not attach to the stipe there, so all of these keys would indicate that this is in the genus Pluteus, and so this one, Pluteus cervinus, probably the most um, common one here, you know, we also have a Pluteus exilis, and a uh, uh, different the uh, the velvet deer shield i found some of those the pluteus umbrosus but those are far more rare this one's pretty common and you can see this growing trail side off of old dead logs like this and you can eat it it is edible i have never eaten the pluteus so i can't speak to how it tastes but um it's said that deer might eat them uh it's also said that uh, they just don't taste good or otherwise people would pick them because they're pretty common uh, some people say it's called that because of the color of it is like that of a deer other people say it's because the cystidia can look like an antler of a deer. Um, but I think it does have to do with the coloring of it. The beautiful mushrooms growing here in the beginning of the summer. So these are some pretty cool mushrooms that we found growing right here. Uh, around this decaying rotting stump and these are an inky cap these ones are known as Copernellus micaceus or the mica cap and uh, they have a, a really dark gill under there that's due to the really black spore prints that these mushrooms have but they like to grow in these big huge clusters like this Copernellus micaceus or the mica cap is a good example of that this is an edible mushroom and you could eat these although they deliquesce into a black ink pretty rapidly. So not a really highly prized one. Some people use it in stocks and in soups, but personally, I just leave these ones alone. They sure are beautiful though, growing here in the spring, early summer. You can find these pretty much growing all year round. Man, I just love it out in the forest. And if you love it out in the forest, you know, hunting wild mushrooms is the perfect pastime for you. It's a good excuse to be out here. Um, and the best mushrooms seem to grow in the best forests. So I love me a beautiful forest. And uh, I like just walking down the trail and discovering what kind of mushrooms might be growing here. I'm in Western Washington. And we got a lot of mushrooms that grow here, even though it's getting really dry. But right here, look at this. This old snag has fallen down. These guys, really common mushroom grows on logs around here. This one, Fomitopsis uh, monsiae. So this is the red belted conch. You can see there's a little red belt. It's actually kind of more orange, but there's some reddish hues in there. Really common, brown right decay shows up on a lot of my ID videos. Look at this younger one and all of these beautiful driplets. It's sweating. So these are little metabolites coming out of the mushroom. We call it guttation. So pretty common on these mushrooms. It just rained and it's pretty warm out. It's like low 70s right now. So this mushroom's actually sweating some metabolites. It's just this being probably the most common mushroom in the forest of the PNW. Growing all over this log, it, it helps to decay the wood and break it down back into usable matter. So yeah, you could drink this pure filtered water. Could even have some medicinal powers, but I can't really speak to that. But uh, some people think these are medicinal mushrooms. So some people think all mushrooms are medicinal. I mean, all non-poisonous ones, I guess. But this is letting off a million spores. This is a young specimen, it's fresh. And there's little tiny pores right here. 
um, where the spores come out of. You can't really see them with your naked eye when it's this young. But let me get out my hand lens really quick and I'll show you. So here we go. I got this little uh, little hand lens, a little jeweler's loop. I'll put a link to this in the description, but it's got two different lenses, really ultra magnified and not so much two different bulbs. So you get a little light on it, but what's really cool is if I line it up, let's see. So can we see the little tiny pores? Gosh, almost not even yet. They're so tight because this is such a fresh young specimen, but you know, I promise you there's little holes where the spores come out of. So yeah, carrying one of these, they're really cheap and, uh, and useful if you're looking at interesting mushrooms. If you're not sure if something's a turkey tail, you can easily see the pores. But really cool example, Fumitopsis mountier. Beautiful, I'm gonna take a couple of pictures, but we'll keep heading on down the trail on this beautiful early summer day. Ooh, I see this really pretty thing growing on this stick over here. That really caught my eye. Looks like an apple fritter or something like that. Look at the stem on that, really dark. So these are uh, commonly called the black-footed polypore. It's a polypore, you can see underneath, there's no gills, it's not a sponge surface. It has tiny, tiny little pores that the uh, spores fall out of. This is a very leathery, woody kind of mushroom, much like the polypores you find growing on the trees around here. This one actually has a stem though, and a cap. And uh, the stem is always like really dark black like that. This is Piceps batius, or the uh, black-footed polypore. This guy is beautiful color and inedible because it's so tough. Oh look, it has a little friend down there. So the mycelium is growing all through this stick. These just happen to be the fruit bodies of the fungus. So the fungus would appear to look just like a lot like a mold, you know. But it grows like a little mold inside this dead. It looks like a this is looks like a, a alder stick, but a beautiful little fruiting. And this will stick around and drop spores for quite a long time. I'm just gonna leave it there in the woods, and I could come back to this same spot in two months, and that mushroom will still be there if somebody didn't take it. But uh, no culinary value to us, but a beautiful little addition to the forest. We sure live on a beautiful area around here. This is the Kitsap Peninsula. So we're right down around sea level in western Washington. Uh, yeah, the Puget Sound and the salt water, Pacific Ocean is right out there. And there's big whales and salmon and all that kind of fun stuff. And Bigfoot's probably somewhere out here. But I'm fortunate to live in such a nice area. But uh, I'm afraid we're getting into the beginning of a, what's going to be a dry summer. Which can be a real bummer. We had a terrible one last year. Uh, worst mushroom year ever. I've heard a lot of people say, even people have been doing this 60, 70 years, said that last year was like the driest, worst year for mushrooms ever. So, no, we're hoping for more rain this summer than we had last year because the mushrooms need the rain. Check out what I found growing right here on the side of this tree. Another conch mushroom, but this one being Ganoderma organensi, or the Northwest Reishi mushroom. So, really uh, regarded as a highly medicinal mushroom, also known as the lacquered conch. But this one's old; it's kind of lost its lacquer. Even you can see it right there; it's really shiny. These are big spore producers. They're related to the artist conch, and uh, you know, people cultivate different species of these all over the world. This one, Ganoderma organensi, occurs from uh, British Columbia or maybe even north of that all the way down to Northern California. Does they really like old growth stands? This is a pretty ancient, uh, judging by the tightness of the bark, I'm gonna say a Western hemlock. Yeah, and the way these roots are growing on top of all these logs and stuff. But uh, yeah, it seems to be uh, liking it here. It no doubt let a lot of spores go. And this one's old and it's June now, so this is about the time when I start seeing fresh young ones popping out. So um, anytime now, we're gonna start seeing fresh reishi, which is a, a good excuse to go mushroom hunting in the dead of summer. They like growing on these old logs that retain a lot of water, so. Anyhow, that's kind of a little one, but it's beautiful. And uh, yeah, it's a lacquered conch.
right here. Another big fella that caught my eye. Ooh, pretty. Another one of these tree conks growing on this old, another old hemlock. This one, another Ganoderma organensi, pretty hollow. This one, the reishi has ran its course of life. It has spread spores, billions of spores all over this forest, all over all these other old decaying trees and stumps and logs. And so um, this is an old growth forest. An old growth forest has four main constituents and that being old ancient large trees that are standing like this. There are standing dead trees, which there are those um, widow makers out here. There are logs laying on the ground. And it's also a multi-species, multi-layered canopy. So we have uh, western red cedar here, western hemlock, Douglas fir. We have vine maple, big leaf maple, red alder. So quite a few different species growing in here. And the canopy is at all different levels. There's some huge towering Doug fir. Uh, the intermediate canopy made up of western hemlock and the western red cedar and below that um, are the wetland areas with these deciduous trees you know the fertilizer trees all the alder over here that are gonna put a lot of nitrogen in the soil and eventually someday without human interruption will become more conifer this is known as the western hemlock zone even though it's dominated by uh, the pseudosuga mensesi the uh, douglas fir tree um, but they're not expected to last around here forever. So the scientists went ahead and preemptively called this whole region of west of the Cascades in Oregon and Washington the, the Western Hemlock Zone rather than the Douglas Fir Zone, which it actually is right now. So, but uh, anyways, the forest uh, ecosystem is pretty complex and it has to do with disturbance and fire. And the trees that seem to survive the fire the best are the Douglas fir, the western hemlock, the western red cedar. They burn up, but these Doug fir continue to be the dominant one. And then once the forest burns, uh, there's no hemlock and the cedar can't really seed in. But that's when the Doug fir can seed in and it starts a new stand of Douglas fir. So anyways, we could go all day about the forest. But we're talking about the Ganoderma organensi, another one here, an older one. We're hoping to find some fresh fresh ones this year's they're annual so this this grew last year and it's all funky and old and full of bugs no doubt but uh there's going to be a new batch coming up perhaps direct offspring of this mushroom so cool this one's way past its due date wouldn't be any good to collect even for medicine or whatever you want to use it for so i would uh just leave that one there it's beautiful though so let's keep moving I'd like to do more forest videos. If you'd like that, you know, say something in the comments because uh, I like the tree ID and I like forest ecology and natural science and natural history, just like how, how this came to be and what it'll look like in the future, what this looked like a thousand years ago, you know, you can even tell when like forest fires have came through, you know, and, uh, and just the way that the landscape has changed through just this process of the ever-evolving earth and mother nature. Right here is a relative of the Ganoderma organensi. This one, uh, Ganoderma applinatum, and it grows on hardwood and softwood around here. This one, affectionately known as the artist conch. All this brownish colored area around here, those are all spores. So this dude is letting off lots of spores. It gets in this pancake stacked formation. Oh, there's like a whole colony of bugs here. So this one could very well be dead. Uh, maybe we'll see some more of those and talk about them. But uh, in the same genus as the reishi mushroom, but this one not said to be medicinal or whatever. Dang, I came to this beautiful spot on the stream and look what I found growing on this log right here. Make sure this is solid. Look at that. These are huge Ganoderma applinatums growing in some crazy formations. Look at they're growing upward, which is confusing, right? Because the pore surface is underneath. So that's where it's dropping its spores, but they're growing on top of one another. Look at that. That looks like a foamy topsis mountie growing right on top of a Ganoderma applinatum. So we got some strange mushroom on mushroom action going on on this log <laughs> and i'd like to get across the river and go explore up in that hillside 
but it's the gauntlet of dangerous plants man we have devil's club and stinging nettle and sticker bushes that's like what the entire other side of that stream is so it looks pretty brutal to try to get through but kind of like this little grotto right here i might just hang out here for a while so as i look right down here in this brush a beautiful ornate cap of an old mushroom growing here this one really uh really crazy looking from a distance this one the shaggy parasol chlorophyllum rocotes um this one's got a white gill and a white spore print um it's got a movable uh, ring on the stem and when you break it break the stem it, it'll turn this rusty orange color really quickly these are a good edible mushrooms one of the first ones that i ever got brave enough to really try but look here's another super old one and it is way old so you can't even tell that those were white gills <laughs> and white spores under there but uh, a really handsome mushroom when it's growing and usually I see these in the autumn, so a little bit surprised to see them out here in the fall. But growing here underneath this pretty thick underbrush of like thimbleberry or salmonberry and wood ferns and stuff. But, uh, you know, these areas retain moisture. So if you're looking for mushrooms in the PNW, you might come into an area of forest like this where there is a lot of moisture retained underneath all of this brush and although the mushrooms are harder to spot they um, actually have a chance of being there if you just go straight off into the brush there's a chance you're gonna lose your sense of direction i have a pretty good sense of direction and i've even lost mine a couple of times and it can be really frightening when you realize you're way out in the wilderness and you don't know which way to go or which way you came from and that can be terrifying so be super careful when you're out mushroom hunting. I don't talk about that enough on the channel. That, uh, you know, safety. I always use a tracking app, especially if I'm going off the main trail. I use an app called Strava that I can keep track of where I am. It just keeps a, a track of me. If my battery's dying on my phone, I don't get too far off the trail. And, it's not, and I always have a, a compass in my backpack. And I have a general idea of the direction I want to be heading. So, very important to keep safety in mind. Don't just go wandering off into the woods. Mushroom pickers and hunters get lost every year in the woods. Some die even, so it's tragic and can be avoided. Check this out, growing right trail side. I think this one made it into my last foraging video. This one, oh, it broke. This is a type of zero comellus, but I bet that the base, yep, you can see a little bit of maroon color down there, but not the entire stipe. And uh, there really is no dark purplish color on the cap that a Zeller's bullet would have. So this is the second one of these I found this year. It's probably zero comellus diffractus, and it could be confused easily with zero comellus um, mendocinoensis. But that one will bruise really blue. This one doesn't. It can lightly stain blue when damaged. If I waited long enough, you would see this kind of get some little bit of bluing. It's not the same as in psilocybe mushrooms, but also microscopically, this one's different. So probably edible. I think all these zero camellus are edible. This one's getting a little cracked cap, but it's beyond its prime for sure. It's got worms and bugs in there, but... Zircomelis diffractus, uh, kind of a fun sponge, bolitaceae mushroom grown here in the in the forest in the spring. So I'm gonna toss this one out to uh, get its spores out there. Yay! What's up, little guy? Talkative. Right here on the side of the trail, we have some LBMs, some little brown mushrooms, and uh, there's a little troop of them. There's another one here, and another one back here. Oh, here we have some young ones just popping up. Um, and these are a whoops. 
a mycorrhizal mushroom. So they're growing with probably the roots of this Douglas fir that's right over here and popping up on the trail side. They seem to do that sometimes. It's as if they like to hitch a, you know, have their spores hitch a ride on our pant legs or on our, on the animals or, you know, on their fur or whatever. They kind of like the disturbance. Underneath here, I've got some really brown colored gills and that's actually the color of the spores. These ones, because of this fibrous cap, um, I know this is in the genus Inosibi in the uh, family Inosibaceae. So these, Typically not a good genus of mushrooms to eat. There's a couple of them that are hallucinogenic in the PNW, or I mean in, in North America. I'm not too sure about which ones those are, but pretty sure these are not them. These ones somewhere around Inosibi, Squamulosa, probably poisonous. They have quite a fuzzy little cap on them and uh, just pretty little LBMs. But a lot of people go out in search of hallucinogenic mushrooms they know they're little brown mushrooms and end up picking the wrong ones and these are an example of one the inosibes that if you mistook them you could end up pretty sick so know your little brown mushrooms there's a lot of them so uh, once you get past all the big obvious main popular culinary edible mushrooms then maybe start to learn these if you have an interest in lbms So I've been saying on some of my videos about how autumn is a far superior mushroom season than spring here in Western Washington. Um, do not be discouraged if you're out walking miles of trails and seeing very few or none mushrooms at all because they're just not really out this time of year. So I'm struggling to keep these videos coming to you when it's this season of the year, but we're going we're gonna to find some, you know, we're finding some and, uh, there are mushrooms out here, but they're scarce, no doubt about it. All right, everybody, that was super fun. I hope you enjoyed that video and got some value out of that. If you did, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Check me out on the other platforms. Thank you so much to my patrons, subscribers. And if you feel like supporting me and what I do, please join over on Patreon, Mushroom Wonderland. It's like a $5 membership, really just kind of helps to support me. Don't get a lot of money for making all this mushroom related content. So if it keeps you entertained, please consider supporting me and we will see you on the next episode. Much love everybody, peace out.